Thank you so much. That was, that was just awesome. Lacey, Brian, Jesse, David, thank you so much. That was great. Sunday, happy end of August almost, we're getting there. Ah, how good it is to be here. I just want to welcome you all um, to the space, the place, the place that we call Soul Center that is about deliberately, we're here to deliberately cultivate good, to expand our capacities to hold more good, more joy, more love, more peace than ever before, and that is done through a deliberate and conscious awareness of activating the presence of God to, through, and as your life. Activating the presence of heaven to, through, and as your life. Um, I want to activate that a little bit for Jesse. Put a little spotlight over here. Because technically, technically, we're not supposed to be attached to our prayer, but I'm very attached to you winning next week. So, um, The whole package. Yeah, yeah. He's got the look. He's got the personality. He's got the power. He's got the whole thing. So, uh, you deserve it. You deserve it. And we are holding you there. We are holding you there in person when you're playing, and we're holding you there in our consciousness. In our consciousness, two or more have gathered to celebrate you. I'm going to gush a little bit more. Sorry about that. Anyway, and uh, and appreciate that. Thank you so much for indulging me um, as we indulge on Jesse. As, uh, as you know, the theme of the month is the art of allowing, and you know part of that is there's a couple different aspects of allowing. There's the um, allowing yourself to receive your good, like we do at the end of a prayer when we say, and so I let it be, when we're pulling a fast one on you, <laughs> and so it is, amen. Um, we're saying that we will receive it. And I kind of want to just pay attention, oftentimes, it, sometimes it becomes rote, where it's like, and so it is, amen. And it's like, okay, I mean, and, and that's fine, we're still agreeing, but it's kind of like, and so it is. And so it is, and so I let it be. It's like we're only convincing ourselves. You know that in a prayer, when we are asking for something, sometimes we're using prayer to ask for certain things. We're wanting something to be satiated in our beingness as an experience. We want it to be satiated in our lives as an adventure. And so we're asking the universe, or God, we're asking that to come forward and the only person in the entire world that needs to be convinced of our receiving that is us. That is the only person. And so that part of the allowing, allowing ourselves to receive it in the end, so it is. So I'm just going to invite you as, as, we, uh, as we meet weekly and as you are in your everyday lives and expanding your capacities to go more into prayer. Because I'm, I'm just going to give you a snapshot a snapshot of where we're all headed. We're all headed. Each and every one of us is headed to absolution. Each and every one of us is headed to absolute, complete mastery. Each and every one of us is headed there. Everything has built into it. It is a win-win situation. Oftentimes it doesn't feel like that. Sometimes we stumble. Sometimes we stub our toe and, oh, it hurts. But, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it's the idea that we are all ascended, transcended, ascending masters, and that snapshot is to know that there's the, the time that comes, and, and, and it's on this journey that oftentimes we have glimpses of it. Glimpses when you get lost in a beautiful song where you're just like, oh, okay, where, where do we just go? I mean, I'm in timelessness. And we allow ourselves to move into the eternal. When we leave when we leave the past and the future and the present and move into the eternal, then we're really anchoring the most, the most glorious experience of heaven on earth ever is when we are unattached to the realm of the world of effects. And the other part, um, well, so in that divine picture, we're all going to eventually be and have the experience of ceaseless prayer and ceaseless meditation where we don't go into prayer, we're just in the timeless space of the eternal, walking in the world. That means the only time that we have reactions to things, when we get hurt or disappointed or angry or frustrated or have any of those negative feelings in our beingness, is when we've pulled something from the past into the present and we're allowing ourselves to have a, an experience of that 
right now. And it can diminish, it diminishes our experience of the eternal. And so we want to know the eternal is with us no matter where we go. We're always walking around with it. So we want to start to cultivate that and use our lives to do that. And so part of the allowing is the allowing of ourselves to receive our good. That's one. And we'll get to how we kind of cultivate that. And then allowing yourself to know what it is you actually even desire. Do you know that lots of people are walking around right now and they're so caught up in this rope hamster wheel experience of every day. I get up in the morning and I go in and do this and I have my tea and I have my green drink and I have... Uh, <laughs> That's what I do. And, um, and we're doing okay, and we get onto this kind of wheel of life. And how much time do you actually take to be in a space where you connect with the law of creation, the law of emergence? The law of emergence is dictating that something wants to rise up from within you to be expressed from the eternal. The eternal is coming down into time and space, and we're supposed to grab that and then have it as an experience. That's what time and space is for, is for you to have an experience. That is its explicit purpose in life, is for us to have experiences. We have them in time and space. We have the best experiences in time and space when we're communing in the eternal, and we cultivate that, and we cultivate that, and the best way to do that in our meditation practice is also to be open, like, what is to allow ourselves, to give ourselves the time to even contemplate what is it that makes my heart sing? What is it that brings me joy? What is it that my soul is seeking to express? And, that, and then the irony or the cosmic joke of it all is that you have to take time to commune in the eternal to find out about beauty and love and grace. And so we know that um, in the time-space continuum of the human experience, that one of our birthrights that we all hold so dearly to is that we have free will and free choice. And here's the other universal cosmic joke. Our free will and our free choice kind of gives us this illusion that we can choose to be separate from God, that we can choose to be separate from love or peace or joy or harmony, the eternal energies. It's a, there's this illusion that we can be separate from it. And ultimately, um, some of us, if we travel down the road of pain and suffering, we get so knocked around by things that are happening to us in our lives that we eventually succumb. We succumb and maybe we come down to our knees and then we finally start to say, well, you know, maybe, maybe I can open up to God. Maybe I can allow for a transformation. And I want to just turn that maybe into a yes, let's do it, let's do it, it's going to happen eventually anyway, so we might as well seize it, we might as well open to it, we might as well allow ourselves to not be susceptible to group consciousness. Group consciousness is when two or more gather to create mischief and mayhem. And we don't want to be involved in mischief and mayhem because a lot of times that ends up being a whole bunch of discord and disharmony and pain. And we are at most of it, I'm assuming um, that you all are in agreement with me, that we are choosing, every one of us here, those of you who are streaming in, those of you on Facebook, we are all choosing, choosing to grow through love and joy and benevolent and beautiful ways. We want to choose that. I'm gonna, I, I'll probably remind you of that several times over the course of the years because, because I used to have it built within my psyche, this idea that you could grow and heal and expand through pain and suffering in hard and arduous ways. And the proof will be, if you are growing through anything, through pain and suffering in hard and arduous ways, then on some level, you have chosen to allow yourself to grow that way. So let's go ahead and we're just going to choose, we're having an agreement, a collective agreement, all of us, that we are going to grow through joyous, beautiful, benevolent, and harmonious ways. And then we're going to check in on a regular basis. If you were to just take a snapshot right now and just say, okay, how much time of my 24-hour day um, do I spend 
communing in prayer and meditation and spirit with the things that bring me joy? How much time do I spend contemplating and evoking and allowing myself to commune with the things that are seeking to emerge to and through and as my life that bring me joy and happiness? How much time do I spend allowing myself not only to connect to it, but then allow it to come into my life? How much time do I do that and how much time do I spend in a road every day where I get caught doing the same old things and da 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 and I gotta make these calls, I'm gonna make that calls, and I gotta get stuck in doing, 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 and I'm reacting to this and I'm reacting to that. And oftentimes we kind of forget that there are subtle, small reactions that we do on a regular basis. You know, I, I, um, I don't mean to nitpick, but it seems like a harmless one. It's like oftentimes, you know, and it's like, oh, bless you. And it's like, how many people do you think really, when they say, it's a very courteous, polite thing to do, but how many people do you really think are like going into the field of blessing <laughs> and like being like, oh, and I'm sending you lots of blessing, and, you know, and all that stuff. It's like, or is it just this rote thing that we do, oh, bless you, okay, blah, 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 we move about our daily life. And it's like, so to really be steeped in the energy, to allow ourselves to go deep, to go really deep and to not get lost in the group consciousness that's out there, group consciousness that is telling you all kinds of things that we need drugs for, that we need to turn to pharmaceuticals for, that can suppress and, and make the, the dormant um, issues that are in our cellular memory stay there for a longer period of time and then start to erupt. Because it is natural, you've heard me say it time and time again, that it, the very nature of our biology is for goodness to reveal itself 24 hours a day. Your body is set up biochemically, physiologically, to purge toxins, to purge lies, to purge untruth, to purge anything that is not in alignment with wellness. And uh, the topic for today is to claim your well-being. And so we're looking and we're examining, like, how do you claim your well-being? And so part of that is to first open up to what are the things that I want to allow myself to connect to. And then we have to become aware of what am I allowing myself to be susceptible to? And so I had a client who came to me last year, the beginning of last year, and she was 49 years old. And one of her yearnings and desires, she finally started to allow herself to decide she wanted to have a child. She wanted to be, get pregnant and have a child. Now the group consciousness out there is like, 49, are you insane? Your eggs are stale, you, like, things are no good, you're, you're gonna have, you know, a, a, something's gonna be wrong with your baby. Oh, there's a ton of energy out there that says you are washed up at having a baby pretty much like 40 is where it kind of begins with, oh, you better be careful now. And I, I don't buy into that. I say no, and she came and she's on her spiritual path for a while, but she was very hooked into it, very hooked into it, even though she was telling me, well, no, you know, I really want to believe. I want to believe that anything is possible. And it's like, okay, so I'm, I'm watching this whole thing unfold, and we come and we pray and we meditate, and she's like, ah, okay, and she feels good, and then she walks out, and then all of a sudden, the Western medicine's telling her, oh, no, I don't know where you're getting that hogwash from, but, you know, it's very dangerous at your age, and um, all the precautions and all the things, and you ought not do this. But she want, her desire to have the child was more important because she started to connect with that yearning to a deep yearning to be a mother. And so she started getting fixated, again, on um, artificial insemination and doing all of that stuff. And then, you know, she's married and has a husband, and so they were doing all the stuff where they, they can use science to do that. And all of a sudden, she, she's transferred her fixation. She started to ease up on what Western medicine was saying about being too old, and she moved over to like, oh, well, it's not working because of this, and it's not working because of that, and it's not working because of this, because it went on for, just almost about a year. And so we were working and we're listening. I'm like, okay, and we're getting to a place and we're, eat, we're starting to peel back the layers to get to a safe place, an empowered place where she can allow herself to connect because God does not say no. God only says yes to whatever it is that you want. Now we want to, again, we want to turn back and we want to first connect with what are the authentic desires and once you connect with your authentic desire and you know what you truly choose and you truly want to experience 
and to have as your adventures in life, then it's like we're not taking no for an answer. So that was where we started. We're not taking no for an answer. And we had to keep reeling her back in, reeling her back in. I'm going to cut to the chase. She's <laughs> pregnant now. She's about four months in, and she's due to have her baby. She's 50. Um, and everything is fine. It is all good. And then coincidentally, I was thinking, I went to high school, one of my best friends in high school, and she had been trying for years and years. She's been married for a couple decades already. And um, they tried all the different ways um, of insemination, blah, 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 to get um, pregnant. And it wasn't working, it wasn't working. There was so much pressure and so much stress and so much influence from the outside world. They finally let go. They just let go. But her desire to be pregnant stayed with her. Again, 50 years old. She had a perfectly beautiful, he's now three years old, and he is like the most adorable, healthy, well-rounded, magnificent soul. So I just want to say, it, the whole point that I'm bringing this up is because what ends up happening is we start working on our stuff. We A, we start to avoid, like, what is it that I'm even here for? What is it that I really choose to do and know? What am I allow, when am I going to allow myself to kind of tap into that? Then we want to go ahead and we want to claim that. This is how we start to claim our good. Wellness, as described or defined in the dictionary, is being happy, healthy, and prosperous. I thought, oh, I didn't know prosperous was in there. That's pretty cool. Prosperity, that is part of wellness. And when you look at it from a spiritual perspective, there are the foundational pillars of a life that we stand on that allow us to be happy and healthy and joyous. And prosperity is one of those, not because I need to accumulate all kinds of goods and, and get this and that and all the material realm of all that stuff, but when it's an alignment where prosperity satiates material needs that bring you joy, then it's in alignment with the divine. And to know, like, what is it like to know that God is our source and our supply? God is truly our source and our supply. But how much of us, how many often do we actually know that? On a scale of one to a hundred, where am I on the scale of knowing that God is my source and supply of all good and only good because that is all God is. God is bliss, grace, beauty beyond our wildest dreams. And as you've heard me say pretty much every time I'm here, that golden thread, the golden thread at the mystical realm of all religions and indigenous teachings that travels through because at the mystical realm there is a unification because we're moving into the oneness the oneness of good, the oneness of grace, the oneness of beauty, and that's where it is in the mystical realm. So whether it's Jewish mysticism or Christian mysticism or Islam or Sufism or any of the other isms of mysticism, we want to connect with that. And we do that and we check in first by allowing ourselves to know what we truly desire and to allow it, because some people, some people are too afraid we're too afraid to even look at what I truly desire because it's like, oh, I don't think, I don't know if God really wants me to have that. Like, and there's no God out there, there's no man in the clouds looking down saying, well, no, I don't think Susie deserves that. Not <laughs> that doesn't exist. That does not exist. And as we said before, there's no no in the universe. The universe vibrates at yes. So whatever you truly desire is to be satiated, and as we've been kind of dabbling with in our energy class this weekend, we open into a field, you open into a field, and you start to dance, dance with energy, like we did this morning in the meditation, where we opened up to the energy of beauty, and it's like, oh, okay. Oh, what does beauty smell like? What does it taste like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Oh, yes. What does infinite supply feel like? What does it look like? What does it taste like? For me, we open up to what it means for me. What, is, what are my joys? What, what, we want to kind of open up to that and open up to things and, like, and understand that we got to burst through. we gotta like, we got to get in there. we got to dig in and say, um, you know, kind of like one of my, um, I love what it says in A Course in Miracles, that any direction that would lead you where the Holy Spirit is not, um, it takes you farther from bliss. And so we want to make sure that we're always incorporating and evoking and allowing ourselves 
to be in communion. That's what prayer is. Prayer is to be in communion with spirit. And prayer is it's not something that we do as a religious thing. It's not something. Prayer is one of the most magnificent things there is ever because it's the portal to bliss. It is the portal to grace. It is the portal to good. It is the portal to God. So if I spend five minutes a day, five minutes a week praying, and then I go out, and as soon as I pray, and then I just slap the brakes on, and oh, and I get sucked into a, that energy of group consciousness that says, oh no, that's no good. Or, you know, maybe it's just my own inner voice that's saying, no, you don't deserve that. And I say, okay, those are the signs. No, no. And as we've said before, the proper use of no is, no, I do not accept that. No, get ye behind me. Yes, I will take this. Yes, I am open to my good. If somebody comes up to you and is telling you, it's like, okay, you know, and I might not say it to their face, like, no. <laughs> I might be like, just inside. No. And so um, that's what I'm asking this woman who is, uh, you know, seeking to be pregnant. It's like, no, we're saying no. No to those who are saying that you're going to have a really horrible experience in your pregnancy because you're 50 years old. No. no, no. If I feel the call, if I feel the call and the grace of God coming upon me, then that's what we're going to accept. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to close now with just a small, simple, short process. I just want you to go ahead and, and close your eyes, join me as we turn within, and bring your awareness, bring your awareness to your heart. We're going to open just by saying, saying, I open my heart, my body, my mind, my soul to the infinite presence of God. You don't have to repeat it, just accept it as I said. I open my heart, my body, my mind, soul to the infinite presence of God. Bring your awareness to your heart center and allow yourself to just feel, just to feel what it is that your heart is yearning for. For your heart is the nexus point in your beingness that understands the language of your soul. That's why we turn to the heart. We turn to the heart and we allow ourselves, whatever it is, it might just be peace. It might be a new home. It might be greater and grander experience of infinite supply. It might be a soulmate. It might just be an enhancement to a relationship. Whatever it is, whatever comes to mind, let your heart tell you that. And then bring that desire, and we begin to merge it with an intention and an allowing. Not only are we allowing ourselves to be with it, but we're moving into allowing ourselves to receive it. And so we take a moment and we just ask, we ask, what must I allow in order that I may receive this in the most beautiful and magnificent an infinite, glorious expression of the divine into my life. What must I know in order for me to allow this in? And just allow yourself. It may come now, it may come later. We just open. We open the field. We open the gateway. And it's from here, as we just bathe in the energy, no efforting, no trying, as we bathe in the energy, then we move even deeper into the prayer field. We move into this prayer, and I ask you to hold at the very yearning of your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your heart right now, and we take a moment, and we know that it is God's good pleasure to bring forward the kingdom of heaven and to benevolently and beautifully satiate your heart's desires. They came from God, they are to be satiated by God through you, and as we know that there is a presence beyond our wildest dreams that is bliss, that is nirvana, that is an intelligence that created the galaxies that orbits the earth around the sun, that flows the rivers and beats our hearts. We open to the very presence, the very force, knowing it always says yes and knows you to be the beloved. We are the beloved in whom God is so pleased and we open to that and we allow ourselves to receive our good, to know what our good is, and to be absolutely in a convicted state. We are in a state of conviction, divine right receivership to receive our good. And so we allow ourselves to just bathe very gently in the energy of benevolent satiation and divine fulfillment. I invite you to feel that energy, to feel the energy. Check and see the colors and the fragrance and the sounds 
of benevolent satiation and divine fulfillment. Bathe in that. Let it merge and converge with the yearnings of your heart and the desires of your soul. And it's from this place of knowing, opening the door, allowing it in, that we receive our good. We become malleable, open, soft, and in a state of divine receptivity. It's from this place of gratitude, knowing that it's God's good pleasure to bring this forward, to benevolently satiate it, blissfully, gracefully, beautifully, magnificently, even better than we could ever imagine. We let it be, we let it be, we let it be. We claim it, we own it, we claim our wellness, we own it. And we simply say, and so I let it be. And so it is. Amen. 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 Aho. Shalom. Hotep. And hallelujah. Yes. All right. It is time for the ushers to come forward as we prepare to move into our conscious time of tithing. Thank you so much for indulging me. <laughs> ah, it's so good to bathe in the energy. Oh, and um, as you prepare your tithe, remembering that as we participate in the art of circulation, that we're giving from the infinite supply, the source of all good, and knowing that we every, every time we tithe, every time we gift and give, we're opening, we're going to take the pledge right now. We open to receive more good all the time, expanding our capacity to hold more good. I'm so grateful. If you're tuning in online, please go to soulcenteroc.com and donate online. And um, asking the ushers from this place of divine, infinite supply to go forward. Thank you. 